City Councilwoman Kendra Brooks. Thank you so much, T, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I just want to begin by thanking everyone for being here today. Um, even though I know this has been a difficult week for us all, um, today I intend to talk about the work I've done in City Council this year and what we plan for the year ahead. But first, I, I can't move on without having a little bit to say about this political moment that we're in currently. The insurrection on Wednesday was not just a handful of Trump for now. For now but a representation of what we are up against in the landscape that we are operating in. Y'all know that this was not an isolated incident, but one that has been building for quite some time. The roots extended before Trump. Kendra, you're on mute. There you go. Okay. I don't know when I went on mute, but uh, I'm gonna start here. Uh, what we saw on Tuesday was uh, when the Pennsylvania GOP refused to seat a duly elected PA state senator. So what we realized that the, the attack on our capital was a result of hundreds of years of white supremacy and unbridled capitalism and colonialism. This is what happened when you defund public media and defund education. It's what happens when you villainize black people, immigrants, working class and poor people, women and LGBTQ people. But we all know this is nothing new. Whenever this country has been on a precipice of real change, there's always been a reactionary attempt to stop the social progress. These people are afraid of losing power and view social progress as an attack on the system that they have always relied on. We saw this during the reconstruction, after the civil war, during the civil rights movement, and then right now in our current times. What this also means is now is the time for us to organize. Our communities are hurting. We are already the poorest, biggest city in the country. The pandemic has laid bare the inequities in our city and introduced some new challenges from healthcare disparities to low wages to the housing crisis. There is no longer, there's no shortage of like problems that are facing us right now. But there's good news. And that news is that we are strong. And we have demonstrated the power of grassroots organizing. When Pennsylvania delivered an election to kick Trump out of the White House. And then we saw it again in Georgia. The fact that I am here today as an elected official demonstrates that we have what we can do when we come together and how we can make real systemic change. Across the country, people were watching what happened on Wednesday in terror and disgust. But this was a wake up call for our movement. We have our work cut out for us and we know it, but now is the time to double down on building grassroots power and pushing for real change. So now I wanna talk a little bit about what we did in 2020 and how this past year changed everyone's plans. We had no roadmap. We had no roadmap to navigate this new world that we found ourselves in. But we worked hard and achieved some important victories. So as t stated, the Emergency Housing Protection Act was one of the major accomplishments and fighting for housing justice will continue to be an uphill battle for our city. And I wanna thank you for all your support in winning this package of bills. We could not have done it without you. We laid the groundwork for future housing policy but we also learned that the well being of most of our vulnerable community members during this unprecedented time is not a given. We need to fight tooth and nail 
for housing as a human right. And housing policies will continue to be my top priority. And it's not just about fighting eviction. We will be looking closely at ways to expand low income housing in the city and ways to address the rampant gentrification happening across our city. We need to continue looking at opportunities to stabilize rents because we know that four in 10 Philadelphia households, including more than half of the renters and 28% of homeowners, 28% are cost burden. And that was the case before the pandemic. And we need to prioritize affordability and accessibility in housing moving forward. Another one of the main battles this year has been setting the budget for 2022. As we know, I voted against the 2021 budget because there was no significant decrease to defund or decrease the Philadelphia Police Department. The sharp contrast with Black Lives Matter protesters and how they were treated by the police and the domestic terrorists in the Capitol and how they were treated tells us that we need to continue to push for these community-based models of safety. We also know that gun violence in our city is at a breaking point. The data shows that increased police funding does not address this. So we need to invest in our communities in low income housing, in job programs, in violence prevention and restorative justice programs, in youth programs, in parks and recs. We need to su support communities and not cops. And this needs to be part of a long-term strategy to transform how we approach community safety using a model that is proactive instead of reactive. Another one of my top priorities this year will be laying the groundwork for a Green New Deal. Right now, we are in the relationship building and research phase. And on Wednesday, we had a land justice teach-in to bring together activists who are leading the work at the intersections of land reclamation, food access, racial justice, housing justice, and climate justice. Because we know that all these issues are connected and we cannot tackle them in silos. And lastly, we will continue to work on workers' rights. In the year to come, I will be, I'm sorry, in the year to come, it will be more important than ever to ensure that our low wage workers are protected. And that includes gig economy workers and seasoned workers and those who do not have, do not always have access to these protections. And I just wanna thank you so much for the support that you showed me in my first year of council, for your advocacy and for your concerns on, this, on these issues. I can honestly say this first year of council is not what I expected. All that I expected, this was not it. But now that we understand, my team and I, the lay of the land, we are prepared to keep fighting for the issues that matter to Philadelphians. And I want you all to know that my office is also a resource to all of you. Even though we are working remotely, feel free to reach out to us and we will be there and show up when we need to. And I also, again, just wanna thank you all for believing in me, supporting me and showing up, not just for me, but my neighbors and all Philadelphians when times were rough, when our backs were against the walls, when we had no idea how to get the victories that we made this year. And I could not have done it without all of your support. So I want to be reminded, I want to let you guys know that you can reach us. And our office number, if you need to call, is 267, wrong number. I'm about to give out my personal cell phone number, which many of you have already, but that's funny. 215-242-1111. Um, 
686-0461. And I think Maggie also uh, put it in the chat um, for you guys to uh, have it as well. So thanks again. And in solidarity for 2021, we can do this together. Thank you, Kendra. Steve and Stan, will you please ask the questions that have been raised in chat? Sure. Um, there's a question in the chat box here for you, Councilmember um, Brooks. How difficult was it to, for you to acclimate yourself to work in, um, in City Hall from you know coming in as an activist? Uh, I think I'm still getting acclimated into working in City Hall. Um, I think one of the things, one of my colleagues, uh, Council Member Curtis Jones always reminds me that uh, I came in and said, I didn't come here to make friends. I came to make a difference. Um, and to me, that was my guiding point. Um, I think me being a restorative practitioner and just my way of navigating life um, kind of was like, the a win for my office because that's how we operate even with folks that we know do not agree with our positions we worked hard we did the research we built uh allies across um across the movement even across city city hall um whether it's the mayor's office and administration and that's how we were able to win some of the hardest battles that we had because we were able to garner support um, from unlikely allies. Um, and I can honestly say that, uh, you know, my council, like between Council Member Gautier, um, Council Member Thomas, Council Member Gim, and all the support that they had given my team as some of us being freshmen and the knowledge that we had from, you know, other offices kind of helped us learn how to play this game, but we were playing this game on our own, own terms. One of the things, the first thing I told my team is that this is like chess. And playing chess, if you don't know how to play, I'm not a good chess player, I'm just figuring it out because I was in office, is if you don't know the next step, you have to play close attention. And between myself and my committed team, we played close attention. And that's how we learned to navigate the board to get the wins, whether it was um, uh, Emergency Housing Protection Act, the uh, Emergency Health Leave. Uh, and uh, those are the two main ones that we passed that were the most controversial, but we did it because of the movement. We did it because we were able to build relationships and we, we did it because this is our passion and our commitment to the city. So, you know, I think for us, that was it. And I think he, one, one key win that I have to say is that no one else has ever navigated City Hall either during the pandemic. So, you know, we had to find our own way. Um, and, and I'm proud to say, I think we did an amazing job. I think my team and the movement has done an amazing job to stay true to the values that got us into, into City Hall. And we continue to plan on doing that. And we will continue to reach out to the movement because we couldn't have did this without you guys. Great, thank you, Council Member. Okay. Um, there's, Stan, you had one? Uh, yeah, another question. Um, uh, seems like many of the problems, one of our uh, members says, seems like many of the problems you described can be fixed if we can raise the income level of residents through good paying jobs. Is this going to be part of the Green New Deal that you talked about? Well, we realized that, you know, post the pandemic, we realized so many people will be out of work and not only just bringing new jobs into the city, we need to have good jobs, good well-paying jobs in the city. And for me, when I talk about those unlikely allies, those are allies across the state. And we have to uplift this conversation about raising the minimum wage as a state issue, because it's not something we can just do Philadelphia. You know, some of these things are preempted by our state uh, state government and um, the relationships that we continue to build in our office will be, you know, the catalyst of change to push folks across the state to believe that, you know, Pennsylvania as a whole deserves to have fair wages. And Philadelphia as a city 
we deserve to have quality paying jobs to get us out of this classification is the poorest, biggest city in this country. We can't see that. Into I'm sorry. It's my mother's birthday and she's probably just got her flowers. So she's calling my phone, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, I think so. It is. It will and continue to be a focus, but what we can work on legislatively here in the city is making sure there are worker protections that are in place. So my office is committed to pushing and passing the best legislation that we can to support all workers, as well as working with our state, not just the Philly delegation, but our state elected officials to make sure that raising the minimum wage is a priority. Great, thank you so much. Go ahead, Steve. Sure, uh, so there's a question here um, by Jean Claire. So I think as recently as yesterday, we saw an article in the news that um, Superintendent Hyde and um, PFT President Jerry Jordan um, were talking that likely that the schools will be opening. Uh, so the question from um, Jean is like, what is the city doing to help um, bring additional resources to schools and teachers and trying to get attendance, at least in hybrid attendance. I, I think this is a conversation, this is about the city's revenue and money that's going into the stu school district is gonna be a longer conversation that I cannot completely answer until we get the projections from this quarter coming forward. But my commitment is to make sure that schools get everything that they can. One of the things I did do was raise, um, uh, introduce legislation to end the tenure tax abatement, but it also, in the midst of all the other moving pieces, it has been put on hold. One thing I have been committed to, to everyone, everyone in council understands that I will not vote for any legislation that does not sunset the tax abatement. The tax abatement is one of the major ways we can get to funding our school and we have to continue to push. I also realize that based on the political climate, I have to, this back to this chess game, right? How can we win it? You know, I, I got, I know I have at least three or four other council members that are willing to move on it, but in order for us to win, we need nine votes. In order for it to be video, video, veto proof, we need 12 votes, and that's what we're working on. So the legislation around um, ending the 10-year tax abatement is still, they, it's still out there, but we haven't moved it forward because we're trying to create a situation where we can win on it. You know, I know coming from, you know, coming from the movement and being an organizer and activist, I understand all of these things. But one thing I have learned on this side, we have to fight to win. So a lot of things, a lot of times when I'm like, I don't know, it's mean that I can't do it right now. It's not a no, it's just it's like, I don't have the votes to win on the tax abatement right now, but that doesn't mean it's over. We will continue to push for that. And the other thing that we're talking about is pilots. Penn made a contribution, but that was a donation. It was not a commitment. And it was a portion of what they could actually do. If they can afford to continue to gentrify West Philly, they can afford to invest in our kids. And that's something we will continue to fight around um, and continue to find other ways to bring revenue in the city. Some of the revenue that I think was drink by the tax or it's a drinking tax that funded schools is completely like almost el eliminated because of the pandemic. So we have to continue to monitor the funds that were already earmarked, earmarked for public education and find new ways to generate revenue. But also we're not trying to raise taxes because some people aren't doing well currently and raising taxes is, is it will continue to put pe more people in harm's way. So we're trying to find a perfect situation and the perfect situation, I'm not saying that I won't vote for raising taxes. What I'm saying is I will vote to tax the rich before we continue to take money out of working families part, working people's pockets. And the reality is that's where we are. We have to you know, balance and figure out the budget in a way to not continue to harm working people here in Philadelphia. And this pandemic has put a hardship on our city across the board. Um, and education, just keep in mind, I, I have two children that are still in school and I have grandchildren that are in school. And I understand um, 
the need for quality education. I understand the burden that has been put on families trying to, with this virtual learning and trying to make it happen. And I also understand that I don't want my kids or my grandkids going to school getting sick. So all of these things together is how we're gonna balance out of what a reopening plan looks like for Philadelphia public schools, but we also can't reopen if they have not addressed the issues that have been affecting our school for years, which is the quality of the air, the lead, the asbestos, the mold coupled with possible COVID is a bad situation. So I will continue to keep my finger on that trigger and paying attention exactly what the plans are for the school district and also trying to find more ways to make sure we're funding um, our schools as a whole. Thank you, Kendra. And we appreciate your being here and uh, all your efforts in City Hall.